night. All right. We're excited for tonight. Uh, we've got a great word for you. It's, uh, it's very, uh, it's a powerful word. It's, it's God's word. Here we go. First Peter 5, 8 through 9. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. Matthew 16, 18, B. Upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. I like to say, as Christians, we are the church and we are tougher than hell, aren't we? In Jesus' name, Absolutely. I love it. John 16, 33, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, because I have overcome the world. Love it. If Jesus has overcome the world, and he lives in us, and the gates of hell cannot conquer the church, which is us, then how does the enemy ever win? Why isn't everyone on the planet saved and serving Jesus? 2 Corinthians 2.11 tells us, So that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. What are the enemy's evil schemes? I smell a dirty rat. That devil is a dirty rat and a gravy sucking liar. Yep. You guys did such an awesome job this week. Um, if you follow us on, um, if you follow me personally on Snapchat, if you follow The Edge DCC on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you saw that I put a, posted a question out there and we had, I think, uh, 10 or 12 responses. So a bunch of people earned a thousand points each for their team, which is awesome. Um, but the question was based off of this verse, 2 Corinthians 2.11, so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. So my question to you was, what are some of the schemes that the enemy will use to try to throw Christians off of our game, right? What are some of the schemes that he wants to use against us? And I played that video today, um, and this is in your notes, point number one. I believe one of the enemy's most successful schemes is friendly fire. If he can get us as believers in strife and division, he can reduce our effectiveness in sharing the gospel on this planet. So in that video, the guy who ran into his own teammate, he put his own team at a disadvantage because he took out his own guy. Now, he didn't mean to do that. He was working hard and playing the game and trying to get a win for his team. And, you know, sometimes as Christians, we can do that too. When we attack each other with friendly fire, when we get offended, when we criticize each other or another brother or sister in Christ, friendly fire. John 17, 23 says, and this is Jesus speaking, I am in them, so Jesus is saying he's in us, and you, the Father, are in me, Jesus. May they, us, experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. And then in Ephesians 4, 3, it says, Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. So guys, this friendly fire, as we call it, do, have you guys ever heard that phrase before, friendly fire? It's usually a war term. You guys familiar with it? So sometimes if two countries are at war against each other, country A, we'll call it, let's call it the red team and the blue team, all right? So if team blue accidentally takes out one of its own players in the game that we're going to play today, that's friendly fire, right? That's what they call it. It's not really very friendly, especially when you're thinking about war, because usually you're killing one of your own soldiers or somebody that's in your own army. Um, but that's just a term that the military uses when it talks about taking out somebody who's on your own team, who's wearing your same jersey. So this friendly fire can come between denominations, right? I don't know if you guys have seen that before, like one church will be in a scrap with another church, so crazy, within a church body, or even within a family. You know, if we, as a family, are going against each other, you know, I always tell my kids, um, the number one way to probably get me pretty honked off and irritated is when they're bickering with each other. 
And the reason being, you guys know, you're in school, you guys have jobs, you're on teams. When we go out in the world, there's plenty of people out there that are going to want to criticize you, right? But when we're in a family, whether it be our own family or our church family or the body of Christ and us as a family, we need to be building each other up and supporting each other and encouraging each other. I'm not saying we have to agree with every single thing that the other person does. I'm not even saying we have to like the other person all the time. But we need to be there to build each other up and strengthen each other and encourage each other. If we're treating each other as Christians worse than the world's treating the world, we're falling prey to the enemy's scheme of friendly fire. You know, I may have told this story before, but Butch and I have um, a dear pastor friend who was actually a, a youth pastor and had an incredible youth ministry, grew the youth group to 600 people. I mean, people were knocking down the doors just wanting to get into this youth ministry. It was so cool back in our hometown in Illinois. Um, and every Wednesday, and I mean every Wednesday, his wife would pick a fight with him. And that's why I love this verse. We're not ignorant of the enemy schemes. Now, why do you think the enemy wanted to get her all ticked off at him every Wednesday? You think she wanted him going to that youth group and preaching the word to these kids? Do you think she wanted 600 kids in a small community to get on fire for God and go win the world to Jesus, win their schools to Jesus, win their families to Jesus? No, the enemy didn't want that. But you know what? God bless her. She was ignorant of the enemy's schemes. We can't be that way, you guys. Like, I even noticed with us, and I'm so glad that God showed me that way back when, when we were first married, that example and how she would get irritated with him every Wednesday. And Butch and I kind of chuckle because sometimes it'll be like a Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, and he won't even do anything, and I'm just irritated with him. I'm just, like, bugged. You know, like, do you guys ever get, even with, like, a best friend. Like, Butch is my best friend. You know, sometimes, especially when you're with your best friend a lot, and, you know, we live together, so we are together a lot. You know, sometimes your best friend just bugs you, and you may not even have a reason, right? So we'll just be, like, hanging out, or it'll be a Tuesday night or whatever, and I'll just be cranky and irritable, and then I'm like, oh, tomorrow's Wednesday. And like Butch said, I smell a dirty rat. Okay, devil. We're going to have a great service tomorrow. Awesome. Thanks for that confirmation. And I know because I'm not ignorant of the enemy's schemes. You know, do you guys ever not feel like coming to church? Like this youth group, your parents aren't here. We can be real right now. I'm not going to tell them. Do you guys ever feel like not coming to church? Sunday morning, you guys ever want to sleep in? All right, we got one honest one back there in the booth. You guys ever want to sleep in on Sundays? Like, you ever notice how good your bed feels on Sunday morning? Yes. What's up with that? Like, Saturday, when you can sleep till 2 in the morning, you're, like, up at 6. It's like, what's up with it? Sunday morning, oh, man, that bed feels good. It's like the perfect temperature in your room. Your pillow's in just the right spot, right? Yeah. Well, we're not ignorant of the enemy's schemes. The devil does not want us at Destiny Christian Church, the greatest life-giving church in the Twin Cities, right? He doesn't want us here. He doesn't want you guys getting the word. He wants you to stay all snuggly and cozy in that bed. So when the next time you wake up and maybe it's a Sunday morning and mom and dad are like, it's time for church. And like, oh man, you know, and you're copping an attitude with your parents or Wednesday night, maybe you don't feel like going. I want you guys to remember this. We're not ignorant of the enemy's schemes. He can't take you out, but he wants to wear you out. He wants to keep you out of that church. He doesn't want you getting filled up with the word. So I just want you guys to remember this. You know, the next time you're getting ready for church and maybe you're a little irritated with your family members or whatever the situation may be. You know, we had some great feedback when I asked, what are some of the schemes that the enemy uses? I had one girl respond and say she's got a a family member that believes in witchcraft. And that's an, that's an issue, that's a scheme that the enemy will try to use. Some people said, you know, the enemy will try to tempt you with drugs or alcohol or maybe try to tempt you to steal something, you know, if there's something in the store or something you've wanted for a long time and, you know, mom and dad won't buy it for you, you know, you might be tempted to just, man, nobody will know. I'll just take it home with me. It's not a big deal. Nobody will know. No, we're not ignorant of the enemy's schemes. Awesome, Jane. Great word. Strong. 
Okay, I want to ask a question. I've been asking periodically, how many of you uh, got the word today? How many of you nice. got the word the last week? It's once in the last week, even if it's one verse. Okay. Awesome. Now, the next thing is, how about posting the word on social media, whether it's Instagram. Has anybody done that today? The last week. Nice. Awesome. The last two weeks. The last three weeks. Have you ever posted a scripture verse on social media? Nice. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just asking you because we want the world to know. Listen, we cannot be fat, dumb, and happy feeding ourselves spiritually while the world is going to hell. We're getting the word. We're strong in the Lord, the power of his might. But we got to get the word out. I want you, and I'm going to challenge you. We're just going to do it right here, right now. The tribal wars, tomorrow only. Tomorrow only, or tonight, tomorrow only. You have to put up a scripture verse on social media and tag you. Tag the edge. Tag the edge. Okay? The other social media I want... Twitter. Let's get on Twitter. Is everybody on Twitter too? You guys like Twitter? No. No? A little bit. Here and there. A little spotty. Yeah. Nobody okay. Twitter? Twitter? Okay. Okay, we're going to be on Twitter too. But listen, I need, we're going to give you a thousand points for each one that puts scripture verse, a scripture verse on social media. Okay? All right. Awesome. We must be aware of the enemy's devices, strife and division, not let ourselves get offended. Stay in unity. Listen. Can you get offended? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. You have no right. You have zero right to get offended. You know why? We're Christians. You gave up your rights. So we don't want to hear. We, pastor doesn't need your opinions. You don't have a right. I've got a right. I've been here for 20 years. You have zero rights. We've given them up to Jesus. Does that make sense? That's the key. Our lives are not ours. Deny yourself. Take up the cross and follow Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what. It is incredible that you're not in charge of your own life. I tried it. It didn't work out too well. Trust me, it will not work. Okay. All right, Jane. That's good. All right, point number two, our final point before we tackle tribal wars. Whoa. What is another of the enemy's evil schemes? And, you know, for each of you guys, his schemes might be different. You know, um, I mean, it's just like anybody who's watched you your whole life. You know, you can pretty much tell what it is that's going to get you, you know. Um, so just another evil scheme that we're going to talk about tonight. This is in your notes. You can write this down. Distraction. Well, that doesn't seem like such a terrible thing, does it? I mean, we're talking a minute ago about drugs and alcohol and witchcraft. Distraction. Well, we can get so busy with good things that we're neglecting God things. Mm, that's good. And what I mean by that, did you have something? Up? No, I just want to, are we giving points out for notes? Yeah. Yeah, so if you're writing notes yeah. down, remember, you're getting points out, points for your tribal wars. Oh, tribal wars points. No, we're not, but I love that idea. Um, why are we oh, not? there you go. Show your team leader your notes after this. You get a thousand points for taking notes in service. Yeah, you All gotta right. have Good notes. stuff. Love it. All right, distraction. We can get so busy with good things that we are neglecting God things. So, you know, recreation time, I mean, Butch and I, our family, we're super blessed. Like, God bless us with this fun pontoon. We get to go out on Prior Lake, and man, we just love it. You know, we love just chilling, getting out on the lake, you know, maybe swimming a little bit, or tubing, or going out on the lily pad. And recreation time's good, right? I mean, God rested. It's good for us to have some rest time. Sports are good. You know, all of our kids are athletes. I know a lot of you guys in here are stud athletes, man. You're leaders in your school. You're leaders on your teams. 
Hanging out with your friends is good, right? God, especially if he's blessed you with some great, godly Christian friends. You know, I love having Sela in the house, and she's here with Megan, and, you know, they're best buds. And, you know, I know there are a lot of you guys in here that have awesome, you know, good friendships and relationships. So hanging out with our friends is good. Studying hard in school is good, right? What, like, every grown-up, they mean, study hard, get good grades, right? It's a good thing. You get good grades, you get rewarded, you might get a college scholarship. So all these things are good. But if we're putting any of these things before our relationship with God, that's not good. If we're putting our friends before our relationship with God, if we're putting our sports, if we're putting schoolwork, if we're putting our chill-out time before our relationship with God, it's not good. So this is in your notes. How can we stay focused on God? During times that we're busy with good things. You know, the school year, I know we don't want to talk about school. I'm sorry, guys. It's not even July. Like, school's a bad word. I shouldn't even mention it right now. I know. Sorry. But the reality is, far, far, far away from now, we'll just say, we have to go back to school, right? And school gets busy. You've got studies. You've got your extracurricular activities. Sometimes some of you guys are in a play. Some of you are in the band. Some of you are on sports teams. You get busy. So sometimes we can't avoid being busy, even if it's busy with good things. But there are ways that we can stay focused on God during times that we're busy. Number one, write this down in your notes. First and foremost, we drive it home every time we get to talk to you guys. Stay in the Word. Put the Bible app on your phone. Even if it's just one verse a day. You know, Butch always likes to say, did you eat today? Well, yeah, I ate today. Okay, great. Well, reading the word is like getting food. Did you eat last week? Well, if you ate one time last week and you haven't eaten since then, you're going to be real hungry and a bear to be around. And it's the same way with the word. we got to eat. we got to get in the word every day. Number two, when we've made this so easy for you guys, watch our youth messages on YouTube. You know, I know there are seasons, we've had it within our family, where we got a hockey tournament all weekend long in Duluth. We're not making it to church a two and a half hour drive south for 1045 service when our boys have an 11 o'clock hockey game. You know, we understand that sometimes there are conflicts that we can't avoid, but it's so easy. Go on the Edge DCC YouTube channel. Watch the message. Go on Destiny. Our church just created this phenomenal app. It's super easy. Download the app on your phone. Watch Pastor Joe's messages from Sundays and Wednesdays. You know, I like to just... Press play and listen to one of Pastor Joe's messages while I'm doing my makeup. His message is about 20 minutes. takes me about that long to do my makeup and make a pancake. And I'm good to go. And I've gotten fed spiritually while I'm getting ready for my day. So super easy. Number three, stay connected with friends that sharpen your relationship with God. You know, we're so blessed now. Stay connected with your leaders. You know, stay connected with Coach Dan or Coach Andy or Seth or Butcher myself. You know, we've got, we're on Snapchat, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. You guys, I'll give out my text number, cell number, Butch and I do to anybody, any of you guys who ask for it, okay? Stay connected with your godly friendships here at the Edge. Stay connected with those people in your world that are going to continue to sharpen you. You know, when you're going through an issue, at school or at home, they're going to lead you to the word. Well, tonight we're going out after this. Have you told everybody? I have not. I put on social media, but I haven't awesome. announced it. We got tonight. If you guys want to come, we're going to all be um, get some pizza at um, Old Chicago. So we'd love to have everybody's welcome. Just uh, come and hang out with us. It's yep. going to be fun. We chose so. Old Chicago because I think it's like two or three bucks for like a personal pizza. Two bucks? So tell mom and dad, give Bring me all the quarters bucks. that are in your pocket, and we're going out for pizza. Bring all a right? couple bucks and come have some pizza yes. with us. You're going to love it, okay? Absolutely. Super easy. All right. Great word, Jane. Awesome points. Powerful word. That is strong. Ooh. Straight up word. All right. Everybody bow your heads and close your eyes. Please be quiet during this time, serious time here. I want to ask.